one. Popular sovereignty. Recovering from a monarchy and a failed Articles of Confederation, the Founding Fathers of the United States of America wrote out the U.S. Constitution. They hoped to fix the problems that the Articles of Confederation couldn't fix. Popular sovereignty was one of those solutions. Popular sovereignty, or sovereignty of the people's rule, is the principle that the authority of a state and its government are created and sustained by the consent of its people through the elected representatives, who are the source of all political power. Basically, popular sovereignty means for the people, by the people. Popular sovereignty gives people the right to put who they want in office by voting. Governments derive their just powers from the cons consent of the governed. The idea of popular sovereignty was used by the framers of the Constitution as a founding principle of the government of the United States of America. The amendments to the Constitution also reflect the idea of popular sovereignty. We use the idea of popular sovereignty in democracy. In a democracy, you get to vote who you want to be in charge, and you can vote to someone to get someone impeached, which means they won't be in charge anymore. Federalism is where the power and responsibility of our government is shared between the national and state government. The framers added this to the Constitution for an equilibrium between the national and state government to avoid situations like the Articles of Confederation. The government could not pay its debt, and America lost standing with other nations. The legislature created by the Articles of Confederation gave equal power to large and small states. The national government is based on the Constitution, while everything else they want, as long as it doesn't interfere with the Constitution, is given to the state government. The national government has power to do things like declare war, establish foreign policies, and make money. The state government has power to establish local governments, provide public safety, and regulate trade within states. While national and state governments have separate responsibilities, also they share powers like raising taxes, building roads, providing public welfare, and criminal justice. That's all, folks. Jeez. Limited government. What is limited government and why do we need it? Yeah, that's a good question. What is it? Well, limited government means that the government can only do what and as much as the people want it to, basically. I'm still confused. Can you give an example? Well, think of the government as a boy on a bike. Let's call him Gov. Well, Gov's parents is P and Po. And people tell Gov not to go too far. And the government has to listen because, you know, that's their parents. He has to listen and he can't go too far. Okay, I think I get it now. But why is it, why is that a part of the principles of our constitution? Why is it necessary? If we didn't have limited government, we would be living under a dictatorship, and the government would pretty much rule all, and that's not okay. Well, what really makes a dictatorship so bad? Well, having one person having complete control over you, your family, and everyone's lives doesn't seem too much fun. You're right, Maria. Most people who live under a dictatorship struggle because a lot of their natural rights are or can possibly be pretty much taken away. And what kind of life is that? Right, that's crazy. Well, they say you learn something new every day. Popular sovereignty. What is popular sovereignty and why is it important? Popular sovereignty means that the people make their own government to meet specific guidelines and expectations that protect their rights and liberties. And therefore, the people rule themselves. One example of popular sovereignty is having the right to vote. Another example is the Lincoln Preamble, which gives us the right to vote for who controls the government. The reason to why the framers included popular sovereignty into the Constitution is because our forefathers declared that a government can only be legitimate if the people have the final say. Separation of powers. Framers included this principle in the Constitution to ensure that the central government will have enough power, but not too much. Mm. Separating the powers into branches prevents this by dividing up the power and distributing it evenly among the three branches of government. Each branch has their own responsibility and place in society. The legislative branch makes laws. They are divided into two houses, which consist of representatives elected by the people. The executive branch consists of the president and 15 departments. They enforce the laws. The judicial branch is made up of the Supreme Court and its smaller courts. They interpret the law. Limited government. Limited government is where governmental power is restricted by law and or people. 
People that framed the Constitution included limited government because framers wanted to create a nation where it was a balance of power. In fact, it preserved the government from having too much power and made sure people had a voice. For example, a cop car pulls me over on the side of the road and tells me to get out of my car. I put my hands behind my back. He later goes into my personal belongings, takes them out, and puts them in his cop car without telling me anything. Finally, he walks me over to his car and puts me inside. Therefore, my rights were violated because the government is limited and does not have that power. 